Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of I Am Penge and welcome to Overcrowd, which is a game that I've been following for quite some time. Oh my goodness, it seems like forever since I've been following Overcrowd, but finally it is here and we get to play it and see what it's all about. So what is it all about? It is an underground simulator, and by underground I mean underground trains, the London Underground more specifically. You know, it might also be called the Tube, and in other parts of the world they call it different things. I know in New York and Paris it's called the Metro, isn't it? But this is specifically to do with the London Underground. It's got London Underground names and places and visuals and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's simulating the London Underground. So we're going to be building stations. And in those stations, we're going to have to make sure that everything is working really efficiently. You know, we want to make sure they're connected up to the platforms properly and that people can get off the trains and get on the trains properly. You know, so the flow of traffic is going well. We want ticketing machines, we want ticket barriers and all that kind of stuff. And we've got to make sure it's all working really, really well and slick and effectively, which you know, I'm sure will do it'll be absolutely fine that's what we do in the geek cupboard we make really effective slick things in no way is everything bodged together and cobbled together oh no so this is going into early access on the 6th of June, which by the time this video goes out will be tomorrow. If you're interested, there's a link to the Steam Store page in the video description below, so you can go and look at it and wishlist it and follow it and all that kind of stuff. But we got a key to this from the devs so we could play it just a little bit early, which is very, very kind. So thank you very much, developers. I think what we're going to do is we're going to generate a campaign. Now, I've done the tutorial and I've had a little sort of nosier to campaign, but we're going to generate a new campaign. And what I do like is that the campaigns are all different. They're procedurally generated and different every time. So every time we do this, it's going to be different. So not one playthrough is going to be the same, which I do like. I like the idea of that. So let's generate ourselves a campaign. And of course, we're going to have the campaign seed of Geek Cupboard because it just wouldn't be right having anything else, would it? So there we go. Let's start things off and play some Overcrowd. Okay, so we shall play on normal difficulty. That seems fine. I don't think we need to sort of fiddle about with the difficulty settings. And I like this. We're in Lubden Town. It sounds very familiar. I can't quite put my finger on where Lubden Town might be. But there you go, ye olde Lubden Town it is. And we've got ourselves five zones. Four of them are greyed out. So zones one, two, three, and four are greyed out. But zone five is not. So that's where we're going to be starting in West Rivermouth. Now, the thing about this is that it actually is sort of mimicking, if you like, the real London underground setup. So zone Zone 1 down here, Cambridge Street, with what suspiciously looks like the Shard on it. <laughs> it looks very much like the Shard. Zone 1 is the centre of London. That's that's how this works. In the real underground, Zone 1 is the middle, and then the further away you get from the middle of London, the zones get higher until you're out here kind of in Zone 5, which is kind of the suburbs, if you like. So let's go to West Rivermouth and let's build ourselves a tube station or an underground station or a metro station, whatever you want to call it. It's got trains on it. And here we go, West Rivermouth. Now, I'm delighted to report that Spacebar is paused. Already I'm sold. That's brilliant. I like a Spacebar pause mechanic. So what are we looking at? This is the area that we get to build in. So this bit here, this is given to us. This is our sort of set concourse. So the cross hatch bits, we can't change. We can't change that. That's given to us. We can't knock it down, sell it, move it, or do anything to it. It's just always going to be there. This stuff here is, I don't know, some sort of solid rock. Or is it another building that's in the way or something? Whatever the case, we can't build on this. The grass, obviously, we can build over. Here is the way in. It says little ways in that are indicated by little sort of ye olde Victorian street lamps almost. So Old Kent Road is the way in when we actually connect it up and stuff. And then here we've got potential for two tracks. So these are not actually tracks at the moment because there's, yeah, they're not there. They're not there. We've not sort of fitted the tracks yet. We'll do that shortly. But we've got potential for a track here and a track just here. So we need to start getting building. Firstly, as it says up here, you need an entrance and a track. Yeah, we're not going to do very well <laughs> serving trains to people without a way to get in and then a way to the trains to move about. So yeah, let's sort that out. So this is really lovely. I like this. This is a very good, lovely, sort of pretty mechanic to look at. So we're just going to drag this out here. This is the way in, and we need to connect this to our main building. So we're going to do this. So we drag and it kind of cuts a hole in the floor and then blueprint sort of tiles zoom up. And then you do that and it kind of pops in from underground. <laughs> I do like that. That looks very, very nice. So it costs a little bit of money. We've got just under 12 grand. That'll be absolutely fine. Uh, now we need to get ourselves a door. A door would be very useful. So let's pop that in. And see, that says Metro. That says Metro. So we're building the the underground, but, but it's called the Metro. I don't know what the terminology is anymore. I don't know. So now we've got this. So we've got ourselves a very basic little setup. So people can, when it's open, come in here and then they need to come down to here and get a train. So we need to get ourselves some more floor because that's not going to work. So we need to make sure that we've got a bit of floor just there, like so. And then 
we need to expand that to there, and then that all the way down there. So the train can come all the way through. In fact, we'll expand it across to there as well. So it fills that bit in. So there we go. So we've got some floor. And now I think it's in here. We need to say, yes, this is a platform. So swivel that round. That's a platform. This whole thing is a platform. There is a track. We're going to put trains on it. And then you need to figure out which way you want to do it. So the train doors are un, uh, sort of unconfigured. You need to say, which side do people get on on? That side, that's no good. There's the sort of, there's the uh, mind the gap sort of line there, but that's on the wrong side of the tracks. So let's switch that round and then let's turn that one off. For the minute, no one can get on on this side because th there's no way to get across. There's no way to go under or over. So no, we'll just put it on this side for now. We'll work on that. We'll work on getting that over there. I'm a bit intrigued by this little single bit just here. Why is that there? What can we use this for? I'm not entirely sure what this is going to be useful for, but whatever the case, it's there. I don't really know why it's there. Unless it wants us to build out sort of this. Ah, there's another uh, there's another entrance. Carnaby Street. Ah, so we could have two entrances if we wanted to. OK, well, right now we're down to 6,820 monies. So we're not going to be able to connect everything up right now. So let's just get the basics in. So we've got a train track. That's very important. That's a good thing. Now we need some other bits and bobs. So let's get our edit floor tool. Let's just expand up there a little bit. How much is that going to cost? If we do that whole bit, do you know what? Can we expand to there as well? Let's just do that whole bit like that. 1,080 monies. And this can be our sort of admin land, if you like, because we're going to need stuff to keep the whole place running. We're going to need power. I'm going to need little sort of utilities room with various tools and things in. So let's go to here. Let's get ourselves, let's get ourselves a tools room and then a utility room. So if we put those up here, uh, minimum is three by three. Yes, yeah, so we should be okay for that. So let's put the tool room like that and put the door just there. And then we'll get ourselves a utility room that can go across like that. That is lovely. Yay. And in the utility room, we need some power. This place is going to be no good without some sort of power. So get some generators. Don't know how many of these we need. Not entirely sure. Let's just put two down for now. And then we'll put a little sort of fuel barrel in as well so they can top them up because they run on good old fuel. So someone's going to need to go in and get that, take fuel from there, put them in there. That's fine. Um, Tools. Ah, we haven't unlocked any tools yet. So this does have a sort of procurement sort of tree. So up here, we get bonds. We get bonds given to us by the city hall for moving commuters around. So the green bar at the top shows us how many more commuters we need to shift to get another bond. And then the bonds we use can be used to unlock lovely things. Oh my goodness me, there's all sorts. There's a lot more here than there were in the tutorial. Oh, wow. Oh, there's loads. So there's all sorts of things. You can have plants, because <laughs> for some reason the government need to give us a bond to allow us to put very small sort of plants in our place, or some lighting, or some benches, and all that kind of stuff. We can have uncomfortable benches. <laughs> have fun in our station, everyone. Um, so yeah, we can have all this other stuff. So we can have toolkits. Now, litter pickers, that's going to be an important thing. We might want to get that in. We might want to get that in early, possibly. Or do we save our bonds to have slightly bigger trains? I think we'll save our bonds get ourselves some slightly bigger trains, move more passengers around, and then we will be able to get more bonds as we move more passengers and then unlock the other exciting thing. So let's save up. So that is four. We need four bonds to do that. And we've only got two currently. So we've got two out of the 26 that we can have. So yeah, we've only got two. So we need to save up a little bit. So that room currently, the tool room, is going to be empty because we've not unlocked any tools yet. But we have got a little utility room with some generators in, which is good. So now we need to get a place where people can actually buy things, buy their tickets. So I think that will be in facilities. So we're going to get ourselves a ticket machine. So let's put, we'll put a ticket machine there and we'll put a ticket machine just there. So two of those is good because otherwise people will be queuing and that'll make them grumpy. Uh, we'll also put a uh, bin just there and a bin just there. We'll also take a bin around that corner and we'll put a bin on the platform, possibly just there. And then maybe even one down here as well because you know, no one wants to see litter. No one wants to see litter scattered all over the place. So we'll put some bins down and then we need to get turnstiles. Now we're going to need two of these. How big are they? If we swivel it round. Um, yeah, they're relatively big. So if we put one just there... Then we're going to need to, uh, yeah, so now let's let's do the floor. Let's sort the floor out over here. Let's do that. And then we can have another one. Let's just put that there like that. There we go. And then we'll get ourselves another one of these. So another turnstile. That can go just there. And then we might need some fences. At the moment, 
people can just run around the edge. People can just go, wee, I'm just going to circumvent your, your system and then just, just you know, go around the edge. So there are fences somewhere or other in here. Where are they? Fences, there we go. So we can just put a fence just there. For now, that'll do. Now, ideally, I'd like to bring that round and free up that space. In fact, can we do that? Can we move you round? Can we pick you? Right click to review. Can we move you once once you're down? Or do we how do we fiddle about with you? I'm not entirely sure how we move it once it's down. Okay, right, hang on. Let's see if I can figure out how to move it, because I would like to move that around now. Now I've put it down, I'm being all indecisive, and I want to shifty that round so it's pointing this way. But I'm not entirely sure how we can do that. Maybe we can't move it once it's down. Maybe we just can only sell things. Joe, you know what for now we'll leave it. I'll, I'll move it around at some other point. I'll move it around at a later point when it doesn't cost me lots of money. So what we're going to do is now we need to say who is going to go through this turnstile here. So this turnstile here is going to be for platform one. So that's the way in. So you buy your ticket, you go that way. This one, therefore, is going to be the way out. So the queuing, uh, the, the exiting people go through there. The inbound people come through here. And I kind of, yeah, I want to get that round here and potentially have another ticket machine over here because this now is just sort of wasted space. Nothing's happening there at the minute. But whatever the case, it's fine. We can always sort that out later. So this now is working. It's a functional thing. It's a functional thing that will work. So when we open, people can come in. You can buy a little ticket from the machine. I think we can, um, I think we can actually, do, oh, hang on. It says hold left click to move. Oh, that's got hold left click to move. Hang on, hang on. Hold left click to move. Ah, okay, yeah, so we can, but not that. Right, okay, so we can't pick those things up. We can't pick the turnstiles up, but we can pick other things up, but not the turnstiles. Okay, fair enough, never mind, never mind. It's fine, we'll sort it out. I'm sure it'll all be fine. So now we're ready to open. I think we're ready to open. We don't have a staff room. We don't have a little staff room available. Maybe we could possibly sort of build that down here. We connect that up. Do you know what? Let's do that. Let's go from here. Let's build a little bit just there. Um, I, I don't really know what, what I'm going to do with that. So I'm going to leave that for now. And let's put in a little staff room just to give the staff a bit of a break. Oh, it's got lovely flooring. Oh, that's delightful. Look at Look at the carpet there. Oh, it's it's very, very 90s. That's very good. Um, and then in the staff room, what do we need in the staff room? That's a bit of an empty staff room right there, isn't it? What do we need to put in a staff room? Uh, do we need to unlock things to go in the staff room? Or do they just, is it literally just they can go and stand in there and go, ah, deploy your staff in a staff room so they rest up. Staff will eat and drink automatically from any sources in a staff room. Yeah, about, about having stuff in the staff room. <laughs> Do they need anything in there? Surely being in this beautiful, beautiful room is, is enough. That's enough to make anyone recover quickly. Just so they can get out from away from that flooring, possibly. Um, So, I think, maybe, do we have to unlock stuff in here? Oh, there you go, yes. A staff vending machine and a water cooler. Oh, yeah, possibly we might need to do that. We might need to get these available as well. Water coolers and staff vending machines are going to be a useful thing because all the staff are going to get grumpy and hungry and sad. Um, I need at least two turnstiles. I've got two turnstiles. Ah, do you know what? There's a little gap there. There's a little gap there. I'm, I'm not very happy with that gap. Away with you. I like the way it snaps. It snaps to the edge. That's very nice. Um, I've got two turnstiles, Mr. Alert thing there. I've got one there and one there. So I don't really know what you're nagging at just there. Two turnstiles are in. I think we're ready to open. So let's open our station. Hooray! There we go, look. And then we'll unpause. Hopefully that message will go away. Hopefully that little message will go away. Because I've got two turnstiles. So don't, ah, there we go. Lovely. So, ah, we got some money. We got given some money. Splendid. And in come the little people. <laughs> look at them. Um, it reminds me very much of... um. Uh, Habbo Hotel, which might be showing my age, but it was a thing on the Tinternet a, a long while ago now, back in the back in the early days of the internet. It looked a little bit like this, not exactly the same. These are more sort of these are far more charming. But um, yeah, you kind of had little people, and they wandered about a little bit like they looked a little bit like this. And they wandered about, and you did something, and I think you had it was called Habbo Hotel that you had a little room that you could decorate and stuff. It was you know very sort of early social networky kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't know if it still exists. No idea. I imagine it does not exist anymore. I imagine Habbo Hotel has long since been consigned to internet kind of history. But um, yeah, the visuals on it are really lovely. They're really lovely. And just while we're on that topic, the whole game, this whole game has been made by two people, a couple. One of them did the programming, one did the artwork, 
And that that's amazing. That That is genuinely amazing. I don't know how two people have made this because it's really slick. It looks fantastic. Like the visuals on it, distinct visuals. It's, it works really well. It's really slick. Everything sort of fit, fits. You know, it's all sort of functional. It's not like there's loads of bugs and things not working and stuff. So um, yeah, two people making this. Impressive, very impressive. If I wore a hat, I would take it off to you. I, I don't wear hats because I look stupid in them. But if I did, I would take off my hat to you because it's just very, very impressive. I think they should be very proud of this because it, it's it's wonderful. It's very, very lovely. However, it's really gloomy in our station. Your commuters get upset when it's dark. Build some lights. Oh, have I got no lights? <laughs> oh, dear. OK, so check your reports. See what else is causing you to lose reputation. Remember to do this if your reputation is falling. You can also assess lots of other accessory, lots of the handy things like power usage and commerce. Okay, now yeah, over here, when we see a little plus one above the head, that means they go, yay, reputation, that's good. When there's a minus one, that's a bad thing, so they don't like that. And this thing here means there's a train due. So we can press this, and in comes a train. So it parks right in the middle of this track, which isn't ideal because it's quite a long way away from up there, but that's fine. So um, then some people are going to get off. Support. Four people will eventually get off. Took them a little while, but there we go. And then some other people can get on. So we, there we go. We've got four bonds. So immediately, what I think is the best, let's get a two carriage train. Let's do this. Let's procure that. We've got six bonds. Oh my goodness me. Right. Okay. Yeah. We'll definitely get a two carriage train. Your commuters are trying to buy something they cannot afford. Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> That's their problem. They should be more aware of their financial situation. Your station loses reputation if goods are too expensive. To lower the cost of something, right-click on the object, uh, e.g. a ticket machine, and set a lower price. Now, I saw somebody up here saying, bargain. It said bargain above their head. And they were sort of, they, they assumed it was a bargain. They go, bargain. Uh, all right, now, crowded. Crowded means that it's getting busy. Now, what we do need, we need to get a member of staff. Ethan Taylor. Let's pause time for a second. Ethan Taylor. He's 46. He's level 58. He wants six pounds an hour. It's brilliant. Also, it's in pounds. It's brilliant. It's not in dollars. It's in pounds, which is lovely. Um, he's got some attributes. He's, I mean, he's not got much in the way of perception. He's going to be worn out very quickly as Ethan Taylor with his stamina of one. Uh, but he's quite quick. Ah, that's the trade-off, is it? He's very, very quick but he tires out fairly quickly. And he, you know, he's got moderate strength. He's okay at doing some stuff. It costs two bonds to hire him. Ah, no, I didn't know it cost bonds. I wasn't sure whether it would cost bonds or whether it cost money, but no, so it's bonds. Six an hour is absolutely fine. So we'll hire you. So now we have a member of staff and he's on shift. He's come in to actually do some work. Where is he? There he is. Hello. Right, can you turn around? There we go. So we need to give him stuff to do. We need to give him stuff to do. So the first thing we're going to do is... Let's get him over to... Ah, no, we need the jerry can. Right, hang on. No, don't do that. Don't do that, Taylor. Wait there a second. Uh, we need to get ourselves... Uh, oh, we haven't unlocked the tech for it. We haven't unlocked the tech. Okay, we need to move more people through our station. We need to move more people around. So he can have tools. So we can have a litter picking tool. We can have a jerry can to refill the generators. We can have all sorts of things, including a megaphone as well. A megaphone would be useful. Not enough power. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah, this is a problem. Okay. <laughs> We've not got enough power. We need some more power. Wait there. Wait there. Let, let, let's get another one of these things in. Let's get another lovely little generator going in there. There we go. And Joe, let's put a fourth generator in as well. And I believe we have a train on the way, although we don't have enough power, it seems to imply. Hang on. Come out of that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Call the train. Yeah, there we go. We eight people. Okay, so the eight people are getting off. Yes, it's gloomy. I know, I know. We need all sorts of things. We need loads of bonds. Okay, so, ah, right. We're going to go up to f ah, six bonds. Beautiful. Right. Pause time for a sec. Let's have a look what else we can do. I don't think we need anything else in there. In fact, it's all, it's all locked. All that stuff is locked off. So that is not for this station to have. So advanced station to procure. Yeah, so when we go on to the next levels, we can then come back and unlock these. Facilities-wise, we can have plants or lighting. Level one lighting is surely going to be a good thing because everyone's whinging about it being dark. Also, let's get ourselves some tools. So let's get a litter picker because that's going to be useful. And then we want to get ourselves the jerry can, uh, a toolkit that can repair damaged objects. Not so bothered about that right now. And how many does that leave us? Three. Three things. Oh, yeah, these things are... F we didn't get to play with these in the tutorial. This is This is lovely. Let's get ourselves a newspaper stand. Let's unlock one of them, and then amenities, let's unlock a water cooler 
and an uncomfortable chair. <laughs> don't say I don't spoil you, staff people. Hooray for the uncomfortable chairs. So let's go into here. Let's put a newspaper stand down. 175 monies. Where can that go? Oh, we can put that out. We'll have one there and one there. Oh, I like that. So there's one on this side. There's one on that side. What does it say on the front? Get your paper. The daily grind. <laughs> Very good. I like that. Right, and tools. This is important. So litter picker. We'll put the litter picker... I don't know, there, and we'll get the jerry can just there. Lovely. So now we can get our staff person, wherever he might be, Taylor, right, you, go and equip a jerry can, please. Go and do that. And then while he's doing that, we can come down here and go to facilities, possibly. No, where's the, where's the things that we can put into here? Ah, there you go. A water cooler. So there you go, staff, a little water cooler. And do you know what? I'm not going to put one down. I'm going to put, even though I've only got one staff member, I'm going to put two uncomfortable chairs down. There you go. There you go, Taylor. You've got a choice of chairs. Aren't you lucky? Okay, now if we unpause time, he should walk over here, grab himself the jerry can, which is good. So we'll grab that. And then how about we go and refuel some of these generators? Let's go and do that right now. So he'll go to this thing, fill up the jerry can, and then he will start filling up the generators with lovely fuel, which is good because it means we can actually keep everything going. So power output is blue. Current power requirement is pink. If you're not producing enough, you're enough to run your station, this meter will flash. Okay, it seems like we're doing fine. It seems like we're doing okay. So let's go and also equip him with the litter picker. Let's go and grab the litter picker. And then we want to right click him, go to management. We can switch these things round. So currently his tool priority is the jerry can. We don't really need that right now. I'd rather he had the litter picker. And then if we click on him and just sort of go, all right, there's a bin there. Oh, we need a wheelie bin. Oh, have we not got a wheelie bin? Did I not give us a wheelie bin? Is a wheelie bin a thing we need to unlock? Oh, hang on a moment. <laughs> hang on. Let's look for we a watering can. Um, capacitors. Oh, wheelie bin. Okay, we've got a few of these things. That's fine. Yeah, a wheelie bin's probably very important. Hang on. Let, let's put a bin down. So yeah, wheelie bin. Yay, they go in here, I think. So we'll put a wheelie bin right by the door. So we can go in and just chuck the rubbish in and then run off. Right, now we've got that sorted. Go and empty the bins. So we can click on that. And it covers a larger area. He uses his litter picker thing. He will then grab that, take the rubbish out of the bin, put it into there, and that's all good. I assume he puts it into there. Uh, I think he's trying to put it into the bin. There we go. He's done it. <laughs> Hooray. Well done, Taylor. You put some stuff in a bin. Good job. Anna, what I've done, I've forgotten to actually activate the train, haven't I? Yeah, uh, train is due. Yes, call the train. That would make sense. I, f I f kind of forgot that. I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> lots of people just sitting there going, well, the trains are terrible around here. There's lots of people that are saying it's overcrowded. We'll deal with that at some other point. Right, let's put some lights in. Obviously, this is going to uh, increase our electricity usage, but I think we possibly do need some lights. So we'll pop a light in there. Uh, so where does that cover? Up to about where that bin is. So we put another light there. That covers that area. And another light just there kind of covers the larger area. So I think everywhere should be more or less lit. Is there a lighting view thing that we can have? Thermal imaging, that top floor focus. You have a full concourse bin. You should put a wheelie bin to empty it into. Ah, one of the bins is full already. Crikey. Then procure build equip your staff with a litter pick tool. Okay. Yeah, we've got that. Where's the full bin? Which one? Hang on. Pause time for a second. Which one is full? Which bin is full already? Not that one. Uh, that one. Oh, crikey. Seven, uh, that's only seven out of ten. That's not full. Seven out of ten is not full. Uh, not that one. Maybe it just means that it looks a bit unsightly now. Go and empty that one, please. Absolutely. Taylor, go and empty some bins. You're working in the underground, so that means you are a bin man now, which is good. Ah, oh, they're getting a bit crowded. They're complaining about it being a bit crowded. Need to sort that out as well. Now, you can equip him with a megaphone. And he basically stands there and just yells at people and tells them to just get on with it. And then, uh, oh, hang on, call the train, call the train. Eight people getting off, which means more people can get on the train, which is all good. Is that how many we've got to move? Ah, we've got to move 80 commuters. Right, okay. A commuter has become late in your station. Oh, I'm sorry. And you're wearing a suit and a tie. It must mean you're very important. Late commuters generate negative reputation over time. Keep calling trains regularly or invest in signal relays to automate your service. I feel like they might be useful. You can also build indicator boards, stop nearby commuters from feeling late. From feeling late. Even though they might be late, <laughs> it stops them from feeling late. Okay, 
So they're now going to... Uh, yeah, look, this person here is late as well. Okay, fine. Everybody get off the train. Everybody else get on the train. Come on, chop, chop. You can do this. It's all good. Two, three, four. Come on, fill this train up. There's loads of room. There's loads of room. There we go. Eight people on the train. And then, yeah, we need to... As soon as that's done, we need to summon another train. As soon as that is done. Okay, let's pause time for a sec. We've got seven bonds. What can we do with seven bonds? Infrastructure-wise, we can't do much except get a staff-only zone. Not so bothered about that. Facilities. An uncomfortable bench. Oh, how delightful. Yes, let's get an uncomfortable bench for all our people to sit on. That'll be nice. Um, capacitors. What does that do? Uh, level 1 capacitor will store a small amount of excess power to keep your power network active when you're out of fuel. Hopefully we won't need to worry about that right now. Um, we can get a watering can to water the plants. We can get a newspaper billboard. And in amenities, we can get a staff vending machine. I don't think we need any of those things, particularly right now. I think we just need to kind of keep stuff going. Um, hey, Taylor, do you are you automated? Do I need to keep telling you what to do? Okay, fine. So we'll empty that bin now. Can we get another person? Can we employ another person? No. Okay, so we've got one employee running the entire station. <laughs> okay, have fun with that. What we're going to do is, there's a few people down here that are overcrowded. And yeah, that's the name, that's literally the name of the game. So we want to make sure that they're feeling happy. We want them to be happy. So in tools, we can get ourselves a megaphone. So I, I like the idea of this. I like the fact that we just walk around with a megaphone yelling at people in their faces and it makes them, for some reason, it makes them happier. When they're being yelled at by someone with a megaphone, it makes them happy. So yes, generates positive reputation. So let's procure that. Lovely. And then that generates a thing in here. Level one megaphone. Let's put the megaphone down. Now, how are we looking for fuel? Okay, that generator is looking a little bit empty. So when you've done the bin, when you've finished doing the bin, Taylor, there you go. When you finish putting the rubbish in. Right, I'm going to stop you there for a second. Go and refuel that generator because that one's looking a little bit sort of flaky there. It's looking a little bit low. Right, play, uh, plane? Nope, not plane. Trains. Train, yep, yeah, call the train, absolutely. Right, that generator's been topped up, which is nice. Is he doing the rest? Or is he now just standing by the fuel barrel? I think he might just be standing by the fuel barrel. Okay, right, de-equip the, um, the jerry can. Put the jerry can away. Put it back in its little jerry can box. Go and grab the megaphone, and then... We'll just go and stand down here on the, on the concourse and just go and yell at people. <laughs> we'll go and yell at people and that makes them feel... So somebody there, it did have overcrowded on it. They go crowded. So there's lots of negative reputation things coming in. So Taylor's just going to stand and yell at people, I think. I think he's just going to yell at people. Oh no, he's, oh, he's doing the litter. He's, 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 he's very diligent. He's, he's telling, he, he, hates, he hates litter. He hates rubbish being around the place. Yeah, I forgot to switch his tool priority around. It's all fine. Let, let him put the thing in the bin. There we go. It takes a long while for him to put stuff in the bin. But there we go. So that's good. So now, Taylor, let's switch your, your thing around. There we go. Now do the megaphone, please. <laughs> because I want you to shout at some people. Let's go and yell at people. Stand about there. Look, that'll do. So stand there and go and yell in people's faces with a megaphone. I'm sure it'll be fun. There you go. So that person's crowded. You're crowded. They're all getting a bit grumpy and a bit sad. So he's going to start yelling at people. Little magical sparkles appear around them. And then, um, yeah, they, they feel less sort of stressy. There you go. Look, so it's all it's magic. It's magic. Taylor's got a magic megaphone. and It's all good. They should, in theory, sort this out. Only 50% reputation. That's not very good, is it? It's well lit, though. That's good. People like the fact that it's well lit. Ah, yeah. Now, we have got benches. People want to sit down. Uh, okay, everybody, I've got uncomfortable benches for you. Oh, absolutely. Have all these lovely, uncomfortable benches. There you go. Don't say I don't spoil you. And we'll have a few down here as well. Cough, cough, cough. Oh. Oh, that bin down there is a little bit kind of revolting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. It's, it's, just, it's just a bin that's a bit mangy. That's all good. I have put down lots of benches, so, you know, that's nice. Uh, let's put a bench just in that corner as well. So if you're antisocial, grab your newspaper and sit there and be away from everyone else. So I think when everybody gets on this train, that will complete this level. Well, to be fair, I mean, we've got through it. We've not exactly set the world alight there, have we? <laughs> a two-star, a two-star station. I'll take that. I'll, it's better than a one-star, or it's certainly it's better than a no-star. So um, here we got ourselves one track built. Uh, net reputation change, minus 16%. Bear in mind that we did start with entirely nothing. We had nothing unlocked at all. 
So we had no, you know, trash bins, no jerry cans, no benches, no anything. Uh, lifetime profit minus 1,500. Brilliant. Optional goals outstanding. Four. Did we have optional goals? Did we have optional goals? That might be the optional goals button up there. I, I didn't see that. Hang on. <laughs> Let, let's go back. Let's play on for just for just the briefest of moments. That was optional goals. Ah, okay, right. I see. I see. These are things that these are things that we want to do. Ah, oh, thirsty. Yes, I know. We've put a water thing in. We've put a water thing in. Taylor, go and have water. It's fine. Go and use that amenity. Uh, so yes, we've got all these goals. Let's hit transit targets for all possible entrances. Build maximum number of tracks. Oh, I see. Uh, earn a reputation of 75. Earn a reputation of 100%. You get two grand for that. 100%. <laughs> wow. That, that is an awful lot. And I think it's getting to half 11. It means it's the end of the day, but we have succeeded. I mean, it's a, sort of. <laughs> Spiritually, we've succeeded. We, we've got 48% reputation of this station, um, which isn't great. It'll do. It's better than nothing. We have got 10 bonds left. Oh, and here's a little sort of thing today. So what happened? So it was very overcrowded. Okay. I mean, yeah, that, again, that is the name of the game, but that's fine. A bit gloomy. We sorted that out by the end, but of course it took us a long while to get there. So yeah, that sort of hit our reputation relatively hard. So yeah, overcrowded. And then lit up. Fumes is down the end. I should have emptied that bin. Tired. Yeah, we sorted that out with the benches that we put down very late on. Late. Sorry. And high prices. Oh dear. Okay. Right. I see that again. Look. Retail bargain. Yeah, everyone's going, wow, this is brilliant. Does that mean it's the newspaper? Or does that mean it's the tickets? I'm not entirely sure. Whatever the case. Some people saying it was a bargain. Some people saying it was expensive. So whatever. More people thought it was a bargain than they thought it was high price. So that's good. Let's have a look at commuters. That doesn't show me anything. Oh, there were no incidents. There were no incidents of any kind. Nobody got robbed. <laughs> Nobody had a heart attack. Nobody had gastric flu. Oh dear, is that what is that what awaits us on later levels? Gastric flu. Uh. And then commerce-wise, we made 610 monies from tickets and 430 monies from tickets. So we made a grand in tickets. We made nothing. Nothing from newspapers. Nobody cared. Nobody interested in newspapers at all. Okay, so we made absolutely nothing. Uh, but we have completed this level. Uh, yeah, we've got generators low on fuel. That's fine. Let's pause it. So we're done. So now we can go back to the map and continue on through the campaign mode. There we go. West Rivermouth has gone green. It's got a little tick by, which means success. A roaring success of two out of five stars. But I'll take that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for our first effort. And of course, it said in the uh, bit earlier on, it said when you start the actual sort of campaign mode, you can come back and try and improve things when you get better technologies and things. So yeah, at some point, we might well come back and see if we can make that a bit better. Maybe we'll build that second line, which means there'll be less sort of overcrowding and stuff. There's two trains, and that'll make things a lot easier. But um, yeah, now we've got Tarka's Paddock. So we've moved to zone four, moving ever so slightly nearer to the center. It looks like we're going to be actually going underground because that was all overground, really, wasn't it? We didn't dig into the ground on that. It was all level. It was all on one sort of level. This looks like we're going to be digging into the underground, which is very exciting. We're going to dig through the floor. I mean, what could possibly go wrong with doing what we did just there, but on multiple levels? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong with that? And do you know what? We'll do that next time out because we'll finish up for now. It's a very good point to leave it. We've done the first level. We've done the first bit. No point starting the second one. We shall do that next time and see how we get on. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. I really hope you have. This, this is lovely to play. It's really, really good. I, I like everything about it, I think. <laughs> There's not one thing where I kind of think, oh, I don't like this. So um, yeah, we're definitely coming back to this. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be splendid indeed. And also please do subscribe if you are not already to keep up to date with how we get on here in Overcrowd. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Hood, and I will see you next time. She's still heartbroken. <laughs> She's still sick. Oh, Colleen, you're, this is not your day, is it? Sean Bazzini is going to defecate. How's the lounge looking? <laughs> Do you like the plants? I left them there, especially for you guys. <laughs> is there some sort of terrible apocalypse which I need to know about? He's just defecated in a bush. <laughs>